Bichette disease is a rare disorder, and most of the symptoms are thought to be a result of an autoimmune process involving the blood vessels, so it's a type of vasculitis. Among the family of disorders that cause vasculitis, Bichette's is fairly unique because it causes inflammation in the blood vessels of all sizes, small, medium, and large ones, on both the arterial and venous side of the circulation. The underlying cause of Bichette's is unknown, but there are a number of clues. The biggest clue is that the human leukocyte antigen, or HLA genes, seem to play a role, and this is based on the fact that having a specific type, the HLA B51 type, predisposes individuals to having Bichette disease. HLA genes encode proteins found on the surface of immune cells and play a key role in regulation of those cells. And since the disease is a result of an autoimmune process, it makes sense that the HLA B51 proteins could be involved. Another clue is that an individual's response to viral and bacterial infections might be involved. For example, some individuals with Bichette's generate relatively high levels of antibodies to Helicobacter pylori, which might go on to damage blood vessel walls. And this is an example of molecular mimicry, where an antibody to a foreign pathogen starts to cross-react and damage the person's own tissue. Individuals with Bichette's also seem to have a weakened innate immune response, a higher proportion of autoreactive T-cells, and activated neutrophils, which destroy healthy tissue, as well as altered levels of T-helper cells and cytokines. In summary, these clues span genetic and environmental factors, as well as both the innate and the adaptive immune system. When looking at the blood vessels in particular, the classic finding is seeing lymphocytes in the walls of the capillaries, veins, and arteries of all sizes, making them inflamed and boggy. Sometimes the inflammation can get so severe that the tissue around the vessel starts to die off completely. These changes make the endothelial lining more likely to develop blood clots or aneurysms. Since the inflammation is happening in blood vessels of all sizes throughout the body, people with Bichette's can develop a wide range of symptoms. Having said that, most people initially present with recurrent oral ulcers. Relative to aphthous ulcers, the oral ulcers of Bichette's disease can be larger, more painful, and take a few weeks to heal, sometimes recurring before a previous round of ulcers is resolved, which means that they can be almost continuously present. The genital ulcers that develop are similarly painful and can develop around the anus, vulva, or scrotum. Eye inflammation can also develop, and can present in a number of different ways. One is anterior uveitis, which causes a painful decrease in vision, redness of the conjunctiva, and hypopian, which is also known as sterile pus, because inflammatory cells enter the anterior chamber of the eye even though there's no infection present. Another is posterior uveitis, which causes a painless decrease in vision and visual field floaters. On rare occasions, there can also be other types of eye inflammation, including involvement of the optic nerve itself. Not surprisingly, any sort of eye inflammation can potentially lead to vision loss and is therefore one of the most serious aspects of Bichette disease. Some people can also develop skin conditions, like folliculitis or erythema nodosum, an inflammation of the fat cells underneath the skin. As Bichette disease develops, it can vary quite a bit between individuals since it can affect every organ system. Some individuals might have joint stiffness and abdominal pain, while others develop meningitis and kidney disease. The clinical diagnosis is often made based on an individual having a pattern of symptoms consistent with the disease, in particular recurrent oral and genital ulcers, as well as eye and skin lesions. There's no specific blood work that's typically done, but one interesting and unique test that can be used is the pathergy test. In a pathergy test, an individual is pricked on the skin and then reassessed one to two days later. Normally, a small pinprick would heal, but many patients with Bichette disease don't heal normally and instead develop a skin lesion or ulcer at that spot. Treatment for Bichette disease is typically geared at suppressing the immune system to help alleviate the symptoms. That includes the use of medications like corticosteroids, biologic agents that block the effect of tumor necrosis factor, and even intravenous immunoglobulin, which can alter the immune system's activity. 
All right, as a quick recap, Bichette disease is a rare autoimmune disease that affects small, medium, and large arteries and veins, as well as capillaries. The underlying mechanism is unclear, but blood vessels show a pattern of lymphocyte infiltration and surrounding tissue necrosis. Classical features include recurrent oral and genital ulcers, uveitis, and skin lesions, but the disease can affect nearly every organ system. Thanks for watching. You can help support us by donating on Patreon, subscribing to our channel, or telling your friends about us on social media.